Okay. Hi, I'm Maddie. I'm Shane. And our advisor is Dr. Kim. And our project was rule-based control and communication of humanoid robots using high-level Petri nets. So a basic Petri net is a modeling system used to represent um, a variety of complex um, control systems. And basically, here's an example uh, right here of a basic Petri net. And there are four main parts to Petri nets. Um, the places, which are represented by the open circles, the rectangles, which are the transitions, and the arrows are the arcs, and then the closed circles are the tokens. And the tokens flow through the transitions and places um, through the entire system. Um, a, one type of high-level Petri net is the fuzzy Petri net, and that is modeled in Jasper, which is, this is an example right here. And fuzzy Petri nets use fuzzy logic, so it uses it makes decisions on things without quantitative reasoning. And um, so an example of that would be like a range of colors and figuring out what color something is based on um, a range of numbers one to zero. So fuzzy Petri nets have emitters and collectors which emit tokens through the system. And um, the most important part of fuzzy Petri nets is um, the certainty factor, which is the value of the tokens and the um, value of the threshold value, which is the value of the transitions. And tokens will only fire through the transitions when the certainty factor is greater than the threshold value. And to once the transition is fired, you have a new value called the truth value, um, in which you multiply the certainty factor and the transition value. And another type of high-level Petri net is a time Petri net. So these incorporate time and durations into the firing of transitions. You can see they are shown by the two numbers in the square brackets. The first number represents the amount of time that must pass before the transition is able to fire. And the second number represents the amount of time that is able to pass before the transition is guaranteed to fire. The program that is used to make these kinds of patient nets and simulate them is called TINA. And an example net is shown on the left right there. So we have two parts to our project. Um, the part that I'm leading is the stabilization part, and we are uh, making the now robot climb onto a platform. And we did this using Choreograph, so that's the now programming system. And in Choreograph, we, there's a feature called animation mode in which you can manipulate the joints of the now robot. And using this, we designed 10 keyframes in which were blended together to make the now robot successfully climb onto the platform. So after we had those 10 keyframes pasted together, um, we analyzed the actuator values in the right hip roll joint um, on the now robot. And as you can see here, so when the now is in standing position, the angle is at zero degrees. And then when the leg swing, swings outward or inward, um, in this example, it's swinging outward and it's at negative 21 degrees. So we use these actuator values to in turn uh, find a range of values in which the now would still be upright and um, we had to manually test a lower bound and an upper bound to figure out the widest range in which the now won't fall over. So once we figured out the ranges we developed a flow chart and this is just like a segment of it because it's fairly repetitive and um, for each keyframe we designed or we found values that the now would still stand up if um, it fell within that range. And if it falls within that range, it moves to the next frame. And if it doesn't fall within that range, it needs to reset because that means it fell over. Um, and then here is the current iteration of the fuzzy Petri net. So a brief overview. It starts at the top here uh, with the emitter. and it uses two cameras on the now one located on the forehead and one located at the mouth. So the first camera locates the platform itself. The second camera will identify the steps and position the robot so that it's ready to step onto the platform. And then it will check the step height um, using its hands. And if it can step, it's going to start the iteration of the keyframe process in which it will check the ranges of um, its actuator values and if it falls within the correct range, it moves to the next frame. And in the end, it will get to the finished product, which is stepping onto the platform successfully. OK, now so for my part of this project, it has to do with communication between two robots. 
So the now robots themselves are capable of sending and receiving data through email. An example of the parameters to of that action of receiving emails shown here with the email address, the password, and a few other aspects of the email. So I wanted to find out how viable this was as a means of transferring data from robot to robot. So I selected a scenario, in this case a crosswalk scenario, that is very scalable in order to make it more complex in the future depending on how depending on the results of this experiment here. So the scenario consists of two robots, a watcher and a guard. Their watcher watches the road and will decide if there's a car present or not. Depending on whichever what it decides, it will send an email with the corresponding message to the other robot. The other robot, uh, actually before that, um, here is a, the email inbox that both robots are using the same account, sending the email, and then the guard will take the email, read it, make sure it is the correct format, as in just the correct subject. It will extract the message, and it will decide whether to let people cross or not, depending on several conditions, one of which is if the road is clear, the other is if a person is present in general. Down here is some of the, a snippet of the code for the crossing guard where it fetches the email, extracts the message, and then makes a decision based off of the contents of that email. Here's the current iteration of the time PetriNet for this system. There are several sections to it. This top section is the watcher, which consists of it looking at the road, seeing a car, and sending the corresponding message through one of these two arcs. The guard will then receive that message and decide to let the person cross or not. If someone is there, once it does, it will keep track of how many people have crossed and how long they have waited, and then it will reset the entire system and repeat until it is stopped. So overall, our project consists of general Petri nets and applying higher level Petri nets such as fuzzy and time into two into each of our lead projects, Maddie's being stabilization, mine being communication, with the overall goal of eventually combining them to apply to bigger robot systems, specifically the RoboCup, which, is, which consists of a team of now robots playing soccer, all coordinating together, and hopefully we can eventually compete in the future. And thank you.